There are several similarities between polar and rectangular arrays in AutoCAD LT, but they each have their own unique characteristics. To create a polar array, start the command, select your objects, and pick a center point. Then you can specify the number of items and the angle to fill. Many polar arrays fill 360 degrees to make a full circle, but I'm going to use less than that for now. When I select the completed array, I get several grips and a contextual ribbon tab. I can use this arrow grip to change the spacing between items. Notice that I can't increase the angle beyond what would create a complete circle. As long as I have less than a full circle, I can use the other arrow grip to either change the number of items or the total fill angle. I could use the center grip to move the array, and with the other square grip I can change the array's radius, or add rows, essentially creating additional concentric circles. Extra rows don't really make sense in this context, so I'll take it back down to one. I could also add levels with this grip, but unless this was an AutoCAD drawing with 3D elements, I probably don't need to. These functions are also available in the contextual tab, number of items in rows, angle between items, total angle, distance between rows, etc. Other options at the end of the tab are much more powerful. Changing the base point doesn't move the objects, but it changes the value of the radius. I'll move the base point to the front center of the chair instead. You'll see why this is important in a minute. If I turn off Rotate Items, the objects stay in the same orientation around the circle, but it makes more sense here to have them rotate. With Edit Source, I can select an item, and any changes I make to it will be reflected in every instance in the array. Notice that the Array tab has been replaced by a smaller Save and Discard Changes panel, and when I do save my changes, I have to select the array again to get the tab back. Replace Item is a way to swap out some instances in the array without affecting the overall associativity. When I use this command, I'll first select the object that I want to add to the array. The base point I pick will land on the circle defined by the stretch radius, so you have to think about where you want the new object to be relative to that circle. In this case, I'll pick the front center of the chair so it lines up with the others. Then, as I click on individual items in the array, they were placed with the new chair. There's also a Source Objects option here, which lets you replace every item in the array at once. Replace item isn't the only way to manipulate individual components of an array. You can also hold down Control and click on an item to select it. Then you can use its grip to move, rotate, scale, or mirror the objects. You can even delete individual items after Control selecting them. After all of this, the array is still associative. You can still change the item count and fill angles. Items that were individually replaced or modified go along as well. If you want to put the array back to its original state, use the Reset Array option at the end of the Contextual tab.